All right, uh, 532 right now. We've been telling you about that sit-in on the House floor from Democrats in Washington, D.C. They are demanding action on gun control measures. And joining us now by phone is Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who took part in the protest yesterday. And Congresswoman, tell us exactly where it is now. What is the plan for today? Uh, aloha, Stephen Grace. Um, basically what happened very late last night, you know, the sit-in began around 10.30 uh, D.C. time yesterday and then around 3.30 in the morning. This morning we had a series of votes throughout the night uh, and the Republicans abruptly adjourned the House until July 5th. So the House is no longer in session. The, Repu the Republicans uh, are no longer there. Uh, so at this point, uh, there's nothing to interfere with. There's no way to force a vote if the Republicans aren't there. So at this point, it's important for us to be able to try to build bipartisan support on these two issues uh, that are core to uh, what, uh, what people were talking about during this uh, sit-in yesterday, uh, and that is making sure that we've got complete background checks for those purchasing guns, whether it be at a gun shop, online, or at a gun show. Uh, and secondly, making sure that terrorists are not allowed to buy guns, while also addressing um, a, a very valid issue, which is the lack of due process and transparency for those mistakenly placed on the no-fly or terror watch list. And I'm working on legislation to address these issues now. Congresswoman, can we go back to last night? It's very rare. I think this has happened twice since the 1970s. But when Republicans tried to move things along to get down to business as usual, there were shouts of shame. There were chants, uh, no bill, no break. There was singing. What was that experience like? You know, it was, uh, I mean, it was somewhat historic, and it really reflected the level of frustration, not, not only for members of Congress, but I think people across the country who uh, recognize that in this democracy, it's outrageous that we can't even have a vote. You know, members of Congress from different parts of the country are going to vote the way that they believe is right. But the fact that for me, you know, the three and a half years that I've served in the House, um, Republicans have not once allowed members to vote on a single piece of gun control legislation. Uh, this notwithstanding the fact that the vast majority of the American people, both Republicans and Democrats, do support sensible uh, gun control legislation like the two issues that I just spoke about. What do you say to someone like Speaker Paul Ryan, who is a Republican, of course, who writes this whole thing off, this whole effort by Democrats as a publicity stunt? Um, you know, I think and I hope that Paul Ryan is, uh, will recognize that uh, we uh, are trying to make sure that we're bringing the voices of our, constitu of our constituencies to the floor in calling for an opportunity to vote. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is what we do. This is what we were hired to do by the people in our districts. And really, that's at the, the heart of this. We can, we can and should debate the substance of these issues. But unless we have the opportunity to vote on it, that debate is not taking place on the floor of the House of Representatives. Congresswoman, to speak to your point, there was an article in the New York Times saying that since 2004, 91% of the time someone from the terror watch list applied to purchase a gun was able to make that purchase. Now, on the other hand, though, you do hear people saying that this gun control would possibly hurt the rest of us because violent offenders would get their hands on these guns anyway. What would you say to that argument? Uh, well, first of all, we've, we've got to be able to do our best. You know, there's no way to be 100% certain that guns are not going to get into the hands of those who seek to do harm. But we've got to try to take these sensible steps, providing complete background checks, whether you're, uh, you know, buying online or at a gun show or at a gun shop to make sure that whether you're a criminal or you're a terrorist or someone who uh, really has no business owning a gun, uh, then you should not be able to purchase that gun. Similarly, the issue of terrorists on the no-fly list, um, we've, that, that makes sense. We've got to make sure that if you are um, a suspected terrorist that you're not allowed to purchase a gun. Uh, the thing that is concerning to both Democrats and Republicans uh, is that there is a, an alarmingly high rate uh, error rate for those who are placed on the no-fly list and terror watch list. And there is no due process. So, Steve, if you get placed on the terror watch list or the no-fly list, A, you're not notified. B, you have no right to see the evidence against you. You have no due process to appeal why you might be on that. And there's no clear way to get off the list. 
We've seen people like U.S. Senator Ted Kennedy, who was on the, the no-fly list. You've seen veterans, uh, military dependents, people who've been placed on this no-fly list who've been barred from flying and traveling, uh, really with no idea why or how they can get off of this. So that's, that's the issue that needs to be addressed. All right, well, we look forward to hearing from you as this debate continues on Capitol Hill. Thank you for joining us live today. Thank, Thank you, you both. Aloha. Aloha.